um, for the next couple of weeks and I want to specifically request can you give me a little volume I want to specifically request that this series make sure that you get um, the soft copy maybe um, well if, if you can get the CD if you want if you CD that you want but I know that um, the media have the soft copy you can get the soft copy and make sure that you listen to them over and over again uh, because I can assure you that a good portion of what we will be sharing in this series are things that you may not grasp at once um, because uh, we'll be going a little philosophical and we'll be looking at issues that really really matter as the foundations of life um, I believe that the Lord will want me to take us through this journey and so we'll be speaking on a subject titled gaining eternal perspective gaining eternal perspective I think it's important to have what we call definition of terms if you are doing research um, either as uh, master student I think also um, for degree I think the same thing goes for uh, but usually when you are doing um, um, your research work as a master student as a PhD student uh, there's something they call operational definition and the whole essence of your operational definition is to ensure that whoever picks your research uh, work can agree with you mentally on um, the meaning of certain words that you use uh, because it's been discovered that because words can have multiple meanings um, the way we interpret them may not be the same especially when you we use them in different contexts so for the sake of the discussion i will be looking at perspective to mean your point of view or how you look like look at life how you look at issues how you look at life and interpret life so when i say um, eternal perspective uh, or when i say eternal i am also talking about timelessness i'm talking about things that goes beyond time that goes beyond your present existence that goes beyond even the whole of this um, earth things that um, lie within the curtain of time and space so when we talk about eternal perspective i'm talking about looking at things or the way you look at things that actually should go beyond the um sophia the temporary view the temporary approach to looking at things and I believe that God will want us to extract the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes is actually a foundational book in the Bible that helps a man to gain perspective. There are so many issues that the book of Ecclesiastes actually call our attention to in helping us to modify our perspectives to life and how we see things. And let me quickly say to you that your perspective to life will determine to a great extent your dispositions your actions your attitude and all I mean, a whole lot of other things about your life your dispositions to people your reactions and actions to people um, uh, uh, the way you handle money the way you handle your work the way you handle relationships and a whole lot of other things like that that have to do with life they are essentially a function of your perspective the way you see it um, people have abused their benefactors malhandled their benefactors I mean when I say benefactor I mean people who are helping them or who are supposed to help them primarily because of the way they see life um, I remember I was looking at somebody the other time a woman talking to somebody who has helped her before and say she told me and then began to say ah, and all and then said all kinds of nonsense and where i was standing i was saying to myself this person does not have understanding because if you have a good perspective you will know that you don't shut a door where you have received help before 
you don't shut it anyhow because you may need to come in through that door again if you gain proper perspective you will then find out that a whole lot of people who have actually either failed in life or have remained stagnant in life they are so because of the way they see life the way they see things the way they handle things i've seen women um malhandle their husbands simply because the man doesn't have the money now or or because of i mean issues that are ordinary or temporary you see some women just open their mouth talk to their husband anyhow behave anyhow and i wonder in my heart if only this woman has a very better understanding if only this woman can see things differently in fact i've seen people malhandle themselves underutilize themselves they have they have they have um, handled themselves in such a way that you could see that greatness cannot come out of their life the way they are living and the only reason why they live that way and they behave that way they carry out their life that way is because they do not have the right perspective to life the way they are viewing life sometimes is so myopic so ordinary that they do not know that they are injuring themselves they are affecting themselves negatively so it's on that note that we are going to be going through a wild range of issues during this series but for today i actually want us to look at something that is the foundation of gaining eternal perspective i'd like you to join me in book of ecclesiastes chapter number two we are going to scan through a, a couple of chapters you know Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I like to read from verse 1. If you don't mind, I'd like you to give me amplified translation. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. I said in my mind, Come now and I'll prove you with meat and test you with pleasure. So have a good time. Enjoy pleasure. This also was vanity, emptiness, falsity, and futility. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of pleasure. What does he accomplish? I search in my mind how to cheer my body with wine, yet at the same time having my mind hold its course and guide me with human wisdom and how to lay hold at fully till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under the heaven all the days of their life. Please, I'd like to take note that this verse 3 holds the key to a lot of other things that you have in the book of Ecclesiastes. And particularly the last portion of that verse 3 he said the whole essence of the exercises that I'm going to be carrying out is that I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under the heaven all the days of their life in other words Solomon was because he's the writer of this Solomon was actually saying that I have seen human beings carry out several activities and what I want to do is that I want to place myself in a position that I can examine the essence of the human activities and I can come to a point where I can give human beings a conclusion of what is essential and what is not essential. Because when you look at life, you will see multitude of activities. Sometimes if you really do not lift up your mind in reflection, you will think the whole world revolves around you. If you do not lift up your mind in reflection, you will think the whole world revolves around you until one day you become sick. And I mean very sick. And you are laying down there and for two, three days you cannot get out of the room. One week you cannot get out of the house. And then you suddenly find out that everybody goes out. The life continues while you are on the bed. Have you noticed that while you are sick, very sick, and you are on the bed and you cannot stand, the world is not stopping to say you should get well. The world just keeps moving on. And paradventure, God forbid, if you drop dead, the world will continue. Maybe a few people might actually get concerned and all of that. Maybe they may do one, some few minutes silence. Maybe if you are very, very impactful in some area, some organization might shut down for you for a period but just shortly after they will continue because that's the way the life is wired have you also noticed that i don't know if you have been there before i've been there before have you also noticed that when you are sick maybe for a day i mean for two days three days and the whole world just keeps moving 
sometimes you get angry that the world is moving leaving you behind particularly if you have members of your families that live or people that live in the same room with you you know they may pity you for the first few days and stay around you and then before you know what it is they have to move on with life so they tell you i'm going out i'll come back and then they may go out for the next four hours five hours seven hours and then you are the only one left at home and then your mind is wondering now i believe that one of the things that god is allowing to happen to us at short time is so that we can reflect one of the greatest problem of humanity is that we really don't reflect many of us are caught up in the web of activities that we never sit down sometime to reflect i really want to challenge you that you shouldn't wait till you are sick till you are invalid before you actually reflect when you learn to do reflection from time to time it will fine tune and refine your approach to life it will refine your your disposition and your behavior it will refine your attitude to life because you suddenly will gain better perspective and that's exactly what the book of ecclesiastes was doing and um, 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 did to us because it was giving us an expression of what solomon did solomon was reflecting he said i've seen all kinds of activities that human beings are involved with and i want to really examine i want to take my time to examine what is the best i've also found out that many times when you see some people enjoying themselves you know maybe they are partying and they are having some nice fun particularly in the area where you have been deprived when you are a child something makes you feel they are lucky ha huh? this was unfortunate too or maybe you see some people they have a nice job good job and then you know they you just see the person say i'm going to work say where do you work say i work at uh, slum badger where do you work i work at chevron where do you work i work at moby and then something in your mind say ah really they're lucky like you because in your mind you feel that in relative terms you are disadvantaged that person is fortunate so Solomon said, I, I just want to know what exactly of all the several activity, multitude of activities of human beings, which one is best? So he said, I decided to do a few things. He said, one of the things I try to do is that I want to have fun. I just want to enjoy myself. I know that people after, you know, after they do all of this, they want to really enjoy. They want to um, um, be in company of their friend, drink alcohol and all that. So I want to also do safe and just see what that is equal to. And so when you look at the whole, because we will not go through that. When you look at the whole of the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2. He began to tell us various activities that he had engaged himself in. He said, I built houses, I built cities, I built organizations, I built, uh, uh, I built uh, 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 projects that were, not, that were not done by anybody before me. He said, but I came to the end of all of those things that I have done. And I just felt this is vanity. In other words, it is meaningless. Can you imagine you are dangote after everything they interview you and you say well with all my accomplishment having companies all over africa and some parts of the world business interests i think all of those things are meaningless do you know what an average person is with an average nigeria especially young people say let give me half of it and let's see if it will be meaningless he says it's meaningless because he has achieved it let me have half then you will know if it is meaningless <laughs> You know what you are what you have really not handled oftentimes freaks you but you need to ask people who have handled it before what's the feeling they have after handling it they suddenly find out that for the the excitement is only in the pursuit the day you got it it loses its meaning that's why the same job that pays heavily that people are running to get the excitement is only in when you are trying to pursue to get it as soon as you get it it loses its meaning is somebody with me as well now? you just find out okay, is, is it all about it have you noticed some of our nigerians who really want to travel abroad before they go they can do anything ah abroad they had your they didn't do anything then when they get there they suddenly find out is this all about it I must, I must be honest with you there are many people abroad who really want to come back home 
The only reason why they can't come home is that they are ashamed of what people will say. Because when they got there, they suddenly found out, ah, is, this, is this all the noise we are making about? Because it looks as many. Are you following me at all? So he said, I did all kinds. I did all kinds. He said, I just find out that the most important thing is that anything that you are pursuing, you should be able to enjoy it. See, I found out that it doesn't matter what you are pursuing. To enjoy it comes only from God. That's the last two verses of that chapter 2. I'm just giving you a summary because we are still going far. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. From verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 from verse 24. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and make himself enjoy good in his labor. That is what you are doing you enjoy say that's the that is the plan that you can you can feed yourself you can be you know and then you can enjoy it he said even this to be able to enjoy what you have even this i have seen is from the hand of god in other words you can have a good job and still not be satisfied hello you can be in money i mean big huge money and still not be happy because all of those things according to solomon they are not the real thing in themselves they are not the thing they are not the end in themselves they appear to be end to us who are pursuing them but they are not the end in themselves they are only means and the moment you turn a means to an end you have missed the game Oh Lord, help me to explain. I think too much grammar there. <laughs> what is supposed to be a vehicle, if you turn it to the destination, you have missed the game. Most of the things we go after, they are supposed to be vehicle carrying us to destinations. But the problem is that human beings, most of us, our perspective is the vehicles have been turned to destinations in our mind. We presume that getting a good job in slump budget if only i can get a good job ah if only they can give me a job in shell ah my young man that's good that's fine but the moment you turn into your destination you have missed the game because you're getting a job in slump budget you will suddenly realize if you are a wise person that it is only a means to an end the end itself that is the destination itself you must discover but if you get into the means and you suddenly think you have arrived you are in trouble are you following me at all now? that's what also happened to people who travel abroad ah, i'm going to uso ah in fact nigeria is late ah nigeria is bad ah hey, blah, blah, blah. fantastic nothing wrong provided you can find out that your change of location is only a means to an end that is if God wants you to change location. Change of location in itself is not the end. It's not the destination. It's only a means for you to get to the destination. So, Solomon told us that I've tried all things. Chapter 1, chapter 2. Told us, I tried all kinds of things. Told us, and for your own sake, for the sake of your own soul, I want to really give you an assignment to go back home and read and think through chapter 2 of the book of Ecclesiastes. Just sit down and think through it. And, and don't, run, don't rush through those things that Solomon said he did. Meditate through those things that he said he did. A good portion of this um, series I'll be drawing from the book of Ecclesiastes. Then suddenly Solomon moved to chapter 3. Solomon moved to chapter 3 and for me Solomon opened chapter 3 with a very profound statement Bush to everything Haba. to everything wow so in other words Solomon was saying having examined life having gone through and having handled you remember in chapter 2 he talks about the things that he, he purchased he possessed he talked about he had silver he had gold you know there were things he possessed there were things he did projects he carried out 
there were events he experienced then he said from my observation to everything there is a season and a time for every matter or purpose under heaven in this place someone introduced a very important concept and he started by saying to everything and you know god made all things and solomon is saying everything you see has its own season what is a season a season is a period marked by definite quality it's a period in time that is marked by definite quality are you following me at all there are unique characteristics of season so it's a period in time usually a long period in time and guess what the life of men are structured into seasons in other words that uh, musician Ebenezer Obi was saying there are three seasons the morning season the afternoon season the night season that in itself is talking about chronological season but there are more than chronological season there are also enjoyment season there are seasons that everything will be against you and there are seasons that everything will be working for you is somebody with me at all now there are seasons that it looks as if people are just bringing you money right left and center there are seasons that it looks as if nobody will remember the number of your house and hear this seasons move like in a rotational form it goes and comes people who do not understand that life is structured that everything must have seasons and there are different seasons is somebody with me at all now? everything that you have in life god has put them in specific seasons there are seasons that even plants that we eat there are seasons they come out there's a season for mango there's a season for orange except you now use modernized technology to fast track the season and they also tell you that if you fast track the season it has its own effect it can never be like when the season is naturally followed is someone with me at all now so there are seasons then he said everything 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 including human being including materials everything including events including experiences everything has a season and hear me well you can never have one season protracted forever season goes season comes wise men are people who know how to ride on the wings of seasons they know the season to hibernate and they know the season to express if you expose yourself in a season you should hibernate you'll be in trouble jesus told the pharisees of his time he said you know how to observe the weather with the elemental season but you don't have an understanding of seasons of life because solomon is telling us here 
there is not only weather that gives us seasons every aspect of life has seasons there are seasons God moves close to you there are seasons it looks as if he's very far you can never hold God down to say you must happy I must feel you close all the time it will never happen it is seasonal there are seasons that growth will appear to be pa 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 there are seasons it will appear is just the growth will be there but it's just you remember when you are young you are going boo, 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 boo. but you get to a particular age that multiplication of your cells that was making you blow up like uh, will suddenly it doesn't mean your cells are still not multiplying but it's not at the rate as it was when you are young because you are now in another season is somebody still with me at all then Paul, i mean solomon stretched his expressions and he said to every purpose there is a time he introduced another important factor in the equation he said i've talked to you about things he said but let me also tell you that things have purposes and purposes have time time talks about duration or a period where things situations events are meant to exist occur or be carried out is someone with me at all now? There are measurable periods. And that's why our lives are measured in time. Structured into seasons. But measured in time. Nobody will live forever. A person may experience several seasons. But you can experience several lives maybe it's 70 years that's the time allotted to you maybe it's 80 years that's the time allotted. all this uh, 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 and all that <laughs> all this uh, concept of uh, when you die now what the good that you do not finish you come and finish it in the world to come <laughs> maybe when god brings back the new heaven and new earth but on this earth, the Bible says it is a portion for man to die. Yes. So it is a portion for man to live. Am I talking to real people in the house? So Paul said, everything that you are seeing has a purpose. Every purpose has time. Every purpose has time then let me go down to verse 11 let's pick it from verse 10 and let's go gently i have seen the painful labor and exertion and miserable business which god has given to the sons of men with which to exercise and busy themselves he has made Finish for me now. He has made. He also has planted eternity in men's heart and minds. A divinely implanted sense of a purpose. A divinely implanted sense of a purpose. Walking through the ages. Which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet, so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Hmm. Verse 14. I know that whatsoever God does, it endures forever nothing can be added to it or nothing taken up from it and god does it that men will reverently fear him 
revere and worship him knowing that he is can i have that to one more scripture chapter 9 yeah yeah bring it up a little bit and just yeah i want that reflection Chapter 9. I'd like us to read from verse 10 to 11. Chapter 9. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Now, what he was saying is that when he said whatever your hands find to do, what he was saying is that whatever season or time that you find yourself in, there will be work that will be presented to you to do within that time within that period that's what he mean by whatever your hand finds to do he said do it with all your mind for there is no device or knowledge or wisdom in sure the place of the dead where you are going in other words if you find yourself in a particular time and you say because you don't like that time or that season of your life you refuse to do the things that God has presented for you to do at that season. He's saying to you that remember that if you die any moment in that other place that you are going to, you are not going to be doing anything anymore. You are only going to be judged by what you did within that time that was presented to you. And nobody knows what is going to be presented next. Let's see, let's see what he said here. Verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither is bread to the to the wise, nor riches to men of intelligence and understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen to them let's let's we have talked about time let's talk about chance chance talks about a divine arrangement that we sometimes call providence we sometimes call it divine coincidence there are certain things that happen in your life that gives you an advantage not because you are smart i like i like i like the testimony of that uh Rassam this morning he said it's not because he's been faithful to God. There are things that God arranges in your life, not because you are smart, not because you are just you are good, but because in his plan he has orchestrated it so well that certain things will meet certain conditions that will open up certain things to you. Are you following me at all now? And he has structured them in such a way that in chapter 2 that we are, we are reading the other time, you remember, Solomon said he has made all things be, okay, we didn't read it, let's quickly get back to chapter 3. I think we read it, I think we read it, chapter 3, verse 11, chapter 3, verse 11, he said, he has made everything well. He has made everything beautiful. So, things are going to be perfect in their time. If they are not going to be in another time. So, for everything that you see, God has structured it that everything that you see. You know, uh, Solomon started by saying, to everything there is a season. Or there is a season for everything. Then he quickly told us that there is a purpose. Or there is a time for every purpose. In, and then he told us later that for everything you see, God has smuggled a purpose inside it. Did you get it? For everything that God created, there is a purpose for them. That is, there is a reason for them. Everything has a reason. Hear this. The clothes you are wearing, before it became a cloth on you, maybe it was rubber, uh, uh, it was uh, part of a tree or cutting on a tree maybe it was sap of a tree but when that thing was still sand God has proposed it that it will go through process of growth 
somebody will come and extract it they will make the clothes that you will wear out of it that was his purpose for everything there is a purpose inside everything now if you can gain this understanding and these views to life it will help you anything you undo without considering the purpose that god has put inside of it you are going to have problem with it so it helped us to see that it's not just getting a job inside every job god will give to you there is a purpose in it it's not about you just being in a location or going to a location every location that god puts you there is a purpose in your coming there many of you come to this church today now for example some never even find out what's the purpose of god bringing me to this church because the beginning of enjoying your life finding the best out of your life is your sense of understanding that there is a purpose for everything is somebody with me at all now come and say there is a purpose for everything that quote that jesus wrote to jerusalem it had already been proposed that he must use it it was structured for that reason was that why that why that culture was there it was proposed the fish that carried money in his mouth it was proposed that that fish must be there because it was necessary that that aspect must be done in jesus life is somebody with me at all now as you are seated here there are vehicles that are proposed for some people that in their lifetime they must ride other people may buy them but the man who god has proposed them for when he shows up on the scene the other man who bought it must leave it people who understand this concept in the agenda of god they are called wise what are they called God wise Psalm chapter 33 verse 11 the Bible says the purpose of God alone stands Psalm 33 verse 11 the counsel is also called purpose purpose called counsel is the same the counsel of the Lord stands forever the thought of his heart through all generation Proverbs chapter 9 verse 21 says there are many purposes in the heart of men there are many ideas of purpose people give themselves different ideas of purpose he said nevertheless the purpose or counsel of the lord alone shall stand proverbs 9 21 ah. sorry 19 21 19 21 proverbs 19 21 sorry okay thank you many plans are in man's mind but it is what huh? do you know as a man you may have a plan for this speaker but god has his own purpose for the speaker and it does not matter what you try to do with your plans with this speaker nevertheless the purpose of god will stand that's why there's a scripture that says i will overturn and overturn and overturn until the man whose own it is comes and i will give it to him this scripture is the reason why people will build houses with a lot of money and they will sell it at peanuts the reason why they couldn't buy the land that, that our brother got is that it is not purpose for them it is purpose for him do you know what i found out nobody can take things that are proposed for you prov provided you are spiritually aligned what could make you not to take delivery of what has been proposed for you if you are a man that is not aligned what is proposed for you will not be are you with me here there are people on earth today 
that are utilizing the things that belong to other people including those who are supposed to be children of god and the only reason why they are using what belongs to them is that those children of god have not come to align with god and when you do not align with god god does not take responsibility to get things that are proposed for you because it's more like from five pound to fire if a house has been proposed for you and you have not aligned with god and in the purpose of god that house when you get it god should be glorified in the house and all of that if you get the house without aligning with god you will use the house wrongly against god so god doesn't go to get it for you somebody else might be occupying and using it and you may live and die without taking delivery and it will not be god is somebody still with me here so the bible says in chapter 3 that we just read he said god has done it that everything is beautiful in his own time because there is already a programming of purpose there is a reason for their existence nothing is existing for fun everything is existing for a reason is someone with me at all? man is supposed to be king leader of all that god created man is supposed to be harnessing everything that god created to make them walk in line with the purpose of god let me also say this to you the purpose of god is a big long eternal agenda what do i mean by that the purpose of god is a stream of purposes that forms one single purpose that is endless it transcends ages that's why god's purpose can be working in 20 generations do you know that god had you in mind in his purpose when he was getting adam when he was getting abraham because god had pictured that through abraham jesus will still one day do you know how many generations it took between jesus between abraham and jesus yet before jesus came god already had you in mind because he wants you to be saved god is not a disorganized god he has everything planned that's why the bible says paul i mean uh, uh, i think it was peter that was speaking he said known unto god are his works from the beginning to the end it's not a god that is limited in knowledge it's a god that has comprehensive knowledge and understanding of what he is doing what he did in the past what he's doing now what he will do tomorrow what he will do in 50 years to come what he will do 100 years to come jesus if jesus started they are all part of his own eternal agenda so every one of us is given a space in time and season is somebody with me at all now? why were you giving a space in time and season because god has a purpose a portion of his purpose that your existence is to fulfill so man exists in two dimensions one dimension is physical existence I'm saying there are two dimensions to us as human beings our physical existence which is bounded in time there is a period allotted to you to appear on planet earth carry out his eternal agenda a portion that has been given to you to do you do your portion when you finish either you finish or you do not finish once your time comes to an end you must exit we only came in here to transact the business of destiny in line with purpose every man is destined to carry out a portion of god's purpose 
God didn't make mistakes. Some of you that said, why will God make me come through my father, through my mother? No, God needed the DNA of your father and mother to come together. There are many people who are sleeping with themselves day and night who never had children for years. You are the one who thought you are an accident. There's no accident in God. It might be accidental in man's opinion. It fits into something in God's agenda. Are you still with me at all? What you call mistake fits into something in God's agenda. There's always a point God wants to prove and he needs a vehicle. So even in the mistake, he will still use the vehicle. Whatever makes God to say, yes, let a child come. The child has a purpose, an agenda in divine programming. Is someone with me at all now? There is a place fitted for you. It doesn't matter if your daddy or your mommy doesn't like you. There's a place fitted for you. You didn't come for them. You only came through them. You came for him. Is somebody still with me here? Say, my dad is always uh, shouting on me. My mommy doesn't even like me. They are irrelevant in this matter. If you can gain a, um, an understanding of this perspective of eternity, if you can have this eternal perspective that there is a purpose behind everything, God does not allow existence without a reason. Is somebody still with me at all? No? See after me. God does not allow existence without a reason. It is my father, my God, who said, both good and bad, I created them for my purpose. It's in the scripture. He said, I created both good and bad for my purpose. I used them to accomplish my purpose. So there is a role for everybody. There is a role for everything. So man is supposed to galvanize and coordinate things within the time that he has been given, within the space that he has been put, so that the purpose of God for things, purpose of God for events, purpose of God for places can be manifested. So simply put, you can say man, who aligns with the purpose of God for his life is a coordinator of things to work out the purpose of God in his location within his time. So it says, for every purpose, there is a time. That time there talks about a period where a spotlight is on you. When it is time for a particular purpose, the spotlight will come on you. Because that purpose must be fulfilled. When it's a time, uh, when, when, when the time comes for the purpose of God to be fulfilled on a particular thing, it could be a car, it could be a shoe, it could be a house. Part of the purpose of God might be that a particular house should move to your hand. That is the purpose of God. When that time comes and you are properly aligned, then events will happen which we call chance that's what he was saying he said i have found out that the race is not to be swift people don't win battles because they are strong what makes things to happen positively to people is that the time has come and there is a perfect alignment so there will be divine coincidence if your time comes and you are not prepared and you are not aligned you will not have divine coincidence that we call chance are you following me so time and chance happens to them because it is god that controls time and chance but for him to control time and chance in your favor you must be a person who aligns with purpose because the key thing about time is the purpose that is within the things and the events of that time every time has a purpose in it is somebody still with me at all now if you are aligned with the purposes of the time then what you will find out is that the time will work in your favor because everything within that time will work for you that's the reason why a lot of people miss their time i pray for you may you not miss your time i said may you not miss your time 
Jesus got to the pool of Bethesda it was time for that guy to be healed but the guy was not aligning with divine purpose he couldn't get it that it was his time the guy said i don't have anybody to carry me he said, i'm not talking about anybody i'm saying it's time do you want to be healed do you want to be made whole you are asking me about people who ask you about people do you want to be made whole it was time the time was set because that the purpose of god for that time is that god will be glorified in his life yet it is the same Jesus that wept over jerusalem he said my problem with you is that you don't know the time of your visitation because when the time comes and you are not aligned with purpose it will go away like that and all the things that are supposed to work for you in that time will not work that's why he said he makes all things beautiful in his time there's beauty in the right time but the beauty of the time is accessed only when a man on i mean aligns with purpose for the time that will push me to say to you are you ever conscious in your mind that you really want to align with the purpose of god for your life for this time do you know that this is a season in your life this is a period in your life and in this period there are things about your life there are purposes about your life for this period that can bring the beauty out of your life for this period and in other periods that will come after if you do not maximize the time that you find yourself in you can never be at the forefront of the glory of god for your life the bible talked about the men of Issachar. he said they were the leaders certain groups in that family it's not all the members of that family certain groups in that family were selected as leaders and the only reason why they were leaders was not because of their age it was not chronological age it was because they had understanding of times and seasons they knew purpose they knew what israel ought to be doing that's purpose they knew purpose for that reason they were at the cutting edge they were the leaders you couldn't beat them to it Gaining divine pers gaining eternal perspective requires that you be at the cutting edge of wanting to know the purpose of God for everything in your life and around you for every time and season. There is nothing as painful and as dangerous as you missing out. You are blank. Your mind is just blank about what God is doing in a particular season in your life no wonder paul the apostle wrote to a particular church he said from the day i had wake that sister up it's not a good time to sleep wake up wake up wake up these are not times to sleep paul said from the day i had that you gave your life to christ he said i began to pray for you I'm not praying for clothes. I'm not praying for shoes. I'm not even asking God to take care of your enemies. I have one simple prayer I'm praying for you. That God will fill you with the knowledge of his will, his purpose. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may know, that you may know, that you may understand what to do. What God expects for you so that you can conduct your affairs accurately and bring forth good fruits. Colossians 1 9. Colossians 1 9. For this reason, we also, from the day we heard of it, have not ceased to pray and make special requests for you asking that you may be filled with the full deep and clear knowledge of his will that's purpose ah uh, in all spiritual wisdom in comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of god and in understanding and discernment of spiritual things why verse 10 that you may walk live conduct your affairs in a manner worthy of the lord 
fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things bearing fruit in every good work that is to start getting results if god will only fill you with knowledge of his purpose that every season in your life you know exactly what is the purpose of god for that season for every period in your life you know what is the intentions of heaven for example you find yourself in great house you are not just coming like a crowd you understand why god brought you to great you could have gone to winners why do you keep coming say somebody invited me thank god for whoever invited you do you know that it was because of a divine agenda that you are invited if not they could have invited you somewhere else not only that many people have invited you to church but you chose to come to this one why we have had a generation of people who never ask questions about what god is doing there is a divine hand organizing and orchestrating your steps and there is an intention in whatever he's doing every time i come in contact with people and i find out that those people are on the landscape of my life for a period of time i start asking questions from god lord why is this person around because i have found out that with god he doesn't joke he's not he's not a gambler he doesn't gamble anybody places in your life there is always a reason and you've got to ask god lord what's the reason may i also say to you aside from god the devil also places people around you so if you are not a person who is always asking lord what is your purpose in all of this you may find the wrong person in your company without you knowing if the wrong person is in god will tell you quickly that one is not me wrongly on the boat as we align with divine purpose we suddenly find out that everything around our lives becomes beautiful because it makes all things beautiful in this time. Let me conclude by giving you this seven advice. Number one, to get the most of your life, you must consistently seek. Seek to know and understand divine purpose for your existence you must go after god that lord i want to understand i want to know the reason for my being alive i am not just alive for four i'm not just one of the numbers to be counted in population sensor i am on earth for a reason and lord what is it alongside that you have to know why it is this time what is god's purpose now this time why should it be now that i mean why didn't i come 50 years ago there must be a purpose why was it that it's my father and my mother that gave back to me that i am bearing a doable why do you know that you may not you may not you may not pay attention to it do you know that there are certain qualities in every family that God naturally endows them with? Sometimes you look at certain families, you see a pattern. It's not only negative things that are in families. There are also good qualities. There are families that you, would, when you trace them, you just see that everybody in that family is courageous. And one of the reasons why God makes you to come to that family is the courage that is in that family. God needs a mixture of them. He picks the courage in your father. Maybe there is industry in the lineage of your mother. He picks the industry in the lineage of your mother. Weaves courage and industry together to produce you. Because he needed the truth. Medical science will tell you that there is geno I mean, uh, genetics is, is powerful. There is something that you inherited from your father and your mother. So God is not a gambler. He is he's intentional. 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 Ah. Intentional. Intentional. 
everything. doesn't make mistake do you know that in his plan he was intentional there was something in the system of rare dialogues that God needed to weave Jesus out have you ever wondered how Jesus the cleanest guy we have an allot so good into his generation his village and the Bible ensured that when they were counting it's usually men that they count but there were two strange women that they counted they counted Rahab the Alot and they counted Ruth the Moabites and it was God that said Moabites should not come into his presence but intentional God has a reason to put them there because they are needed to be part of the womb that will carry Jesus. I don't care what is happening in your life. I'm telling you there is a purpose in all things. That's why the Bible says all things work together for good. To them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. It no longer will matter what is your background and experience. Provided you can identify the purpose in the midst of it. Yes, I understand that four brothers jilted you. Yes, I understand that your mother self does not like you. She might even disown you. I understand all of those pains. But the reality is that in the midst of it, there is an intention. I saw in my Bible that a woman was already programmed by heaven. That she must be one of those who welcome Jesus. Her name was called Anna the prophetess. She lost her husband several years ago. When she was still a young woman. And from that time didn't remarry. And the only reason why God kept her alive. Is that she would be one of those who will welcome Jesus. Intentional. Intentional. You know she matter. What comes my way, you are seen. Intentional, intentional, intentional. I say everything. You are good. Zachariah and his wife were serving God. Zachariah was even a pastor. He goes to the temple to light candles and get all kinds of things prepared. And for years he was growing old and there was no child. They go to church and people say, oh, 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 oh. It was so embarrassing. Yet in the midst of that, there was a purpose. Are you still with me here? Yeah. Even in your pain, there is a purpose. It is you that calls it pain. God calls it process. Yeah. Unless you gain eternal perspective, you will call wrong what God calls good. Be careful the nomenclature you give to circumstances and events simply because you don't have the right perspective. So your first duty, Lord, I may not understand, but I still know you are in control. What's your purpose in all this? My God, this experience might be painful. I may not be able to put my hands on the good side of it. But can you just help me to see what your purpose is? And what I'm supposed to do. Hear me? There are stories God is writing with your life. 
that is beyond you and God will not allow your momentary pleasure and excitement or your desire for comfort for the moment he will not allow you to tamper with the outcome of the story somebody needs to hear your story and say ah God you are alive Can you stand up to your feet this what is writing because we want to jump out of what he is doing already you better enjoy it while it lasts I love that expression in chapter 9 he said whatsoever your hand find it to do do it for I have found out that no matter what the effort of man is it's no man that gets himself what he wants it is God's arrangement of time and chance pastor i don't understand for primary school i've been suffering i went to secondary school this is nobody helping me no i'm a now in partial institution everything is just upside down i can understand you but let me also quickly remind you there is a purpose in play so there is a process to prepare a man of purpose is someone with me at all now you cannot arrive suddenly there are experiences that if you don't have, you cannot have this message. There are mess that only you must carry. And when you have gone through the mess and it cleans you up, you come out and you have a message. I don't think I did more was sharing on our birthday with those of us that were there. And I was almost moved to tears. She said, suddenly at a point in her life when she was less than 14 the business and the life of the father went down 
they were so poor so she had to be hawking oranges on the street of Ibadan just to make stipend gather a little change together it was bad that the situation continued like that she passed our head i mean she did the first exam she didn't pass very well so she couldn't continue because there was no money to even do a egg. life was so horrible she said the only thing that kept her going was the fact that at 14 she now gave her life to christ but it was immense in pain one of her father one of her father uh, i mean one of her father's name is and she said that means somebody that will be a reference point of history he said but they moved that name in her father because there was nothing in her father that looks glorious she said that and family members told her father this girl again because her father has some other girl said this one don't send out to school don't waste your money she said her father said i don't know why all my families are saying i shouldn't send you to school but the little i have i will try so the maximum the father could do was secondary school and she couldn't go beyond that at 19 god who is god of divine arrangement and order ensured that her husband appeared on the landscape of her life they became friends and that's why i want to tell you all brothers and brothers that you just walk up to the landscape of a sister and the first thing you're asking for is sex there may be a higher reason why you are there than that say yeah you see if we love ourselves let's be kissing ourselves maybe you are just a fool why not ask god why do you make me a friend to this person so she said they became friend and she said he will say to him I will push you to any ledge you want to go. Go back to school. She said, she said to him, look, I can't go back to school, me. It's not possible. You know I have a lot of things to handle and I've left school for some time. Blah, blah, blah. She gave excuse. The husband went, gathered the money, paid for her exam. Pushed her. She did the exam. Along the line, they got married early. After getting married, the husband said, you will not be in my house and die under my shadow. You must go to school. After first child, pushed her to school. Went back to school to do a degree. Today, all over the world, everybody wants to hear, hey, Mama Funke. In fact, some people, when they heard that, when they saw that interview, I, I can't count how many messages I've received. Please, can you connect us to her? The few people I connected, if you see the way they were thanking me, and I simply said in my heart, that star was processed in the crucible of pain. A servant and her husband were telling me their story. They said the first year they didn't have money to pay house rent. That the landlord came to embarrass them and said, if you know you do not have capacity, why did you mess them up? She said, I self and a husband they will be doing lessons for children to be able to gather money together she will be very very pregnant get some to come to the to our house in a one room no room but all of that have become history but you know why they have to go through that they have a message that must give hope to people and only a processed man can go through it only a processed man can come to deliver the message. <laughs>
here this morning. Can you go ahead and talk to God? Father, I refuse to struggle with you in the way you are processing my life. I surrender and submit. I acknowledge that you are a master planner. I acknowledge that you know better. I may not understand why I have to go through what I have to go through. But I know that what I have had this morning is that you are perfectly in charge. That there is a divine reason. There is a higher purpose. There is a higher reason why I am going through what I am going through. of our previous ignorance we are struggled with God because we don't know better so we are trying to make a way out if only Rhea Dialot understood that the reason why she appeared to be having breaking breaking relationships is because somewhere in divine plan there is going to be an invasion of the Israelites that will pick her and make her the wife of a, an Israelite and she will later become the great great grandmother of Jesus she will not continue to mess up herself there are ladies that are put in the crucibles of challenges and because they just want a quick way out so they take the control from God and they elongate the time we will repent before God today Lord in whatever way I've tried to struggle to make it out myself, to try to make my life better by myself, trying to ignore that you have a purpose in everything, forgive me. Let mercy speak for me. Can you go ahead and talk to God again? In whatever way I've tried to try to manipulate it, some of us is that you made a mistake in the journey of your life and God want to handle it me say you are trying to cover it by yourself you are trying to do things that will make you look better and God is saying don't worry I understand that mistake I will just give it to me let me handle it you want to say to God Father no matter what it is Lord I am sorry for trying to make it up don't try to make a way for myself I am surrendering to you, O oh God. Have mercy on me. My prayer and my servant are trying to help God. Yes, the bitterness was my God. He was only waiting for an appointed time because he had to carry a child of destiny. So the mistake was about Ishmael. The human effort was Ishmael on the sea. Lord, I refuse to struggle with you. I refuse to engage in human efforts. I cannot survey the situation. You are the last man and let us take on yourself. Just have your way. Just have your way. Just have your way. In Jesus, much less than we pray. Last prayer I want to pray. And before I pray that prayer, all eyes close, all eyes bow. Before I ask you to pray that prayer, 
if you are in this house this morning you are not born again you have not given your life to christ you have not surrendered to god or probably you once were born again but you played the way and you want to say this morning pastor with what i've had i need to surrender to god i need my relationship with god to be reassured if you are such a person in this house all eyes closed and all less bowed wherever you are just move your right hand to the air and i will pray with you there I just want God just needs you to surrender. I just need your complete willingness to say, God, from today I want to build a relationship that lasts with you. Without a strong relationship with God, you cannot be guaranteed. If you are such a person, wherever you are, just wave that right hand to the air and I'll pray for you. You want to say, Pastor, I am the person I want, I want to surrender to. Just wave the right hand to the air. That's all I need. Okay, in the absence of that, I'd like you to pray this last prayer. Father, whatever I need to do, whatever I need to keep doing, to align with your program for my life, to align with your, my, your purpose for my life, help to begin to do them. Can you go ahead and talk to God? Whatever I need to begin to do, whatever I need to do, or begin to do and continue to do, for your word this morning I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice here this morning father that you will baptize us with that deep consciousness that will keep our minds our spirit aligned in knowing your purpose help us oh God to be consistently conscious of your eternal agenda for our lives help us to be constantly conscious of your purpose for everything and everyone every circumstance around our lives help us not to run our own purpose and plans help us to run in precision of your purposes and your plans for us we thank you father in jesus name we pray